Take your Bible this morning, turn to 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. We're doing part two of Rose Petals for Our Path. And when I looked at these first five verses, I, I thought of rose petals when I was looking at all the different truths that are presented in these five verses. Uh, these truths are beautiful, they're lovely, they're fragrant, they improve our spiritual health, and they provide direction for the right path, just like rose petals do, especially when uh, the flower girl drops them on the aisle for the bride to follow to the altar. And so we talked about that in the opening message last week. But look at verse 1 and 2 again. We see we have been looking at the petals of request for prayer. And it says, Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it with you. That's what we talked about last week. So now today we're going to look at this uh, verse 2. And that you may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, for all men have not faith. Let's pray and we'll get into the message. Now Lord, thank you again for the privilege to meet together as a church family. We pray, Lord, as we look at this uh, verse this morning, that we might glean the wonderful truths that are contained within it. Lord, may we leave this morning saying, man, it's been good to be in the house of the Lord today. We pray that you encourage our folks, bless them. And Lord, we pray that if anyone has never asked the Lord Jesus Christ to come into their heart, we pray, Lord, that today they'll make that decision. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Early on the morning of May 27, 2001, missionaries Marcia, uh, uh, missionary Martin and Gracia Burnham, they were celebrating their wedding anniversary at an island resort at a place called Palawan in the country of the Philippines. This was considered to be a safe area in the region. Little did they realize that their celebration would soon turn into a nightmare. Have you ever had nightmare experiences? Well, they did. On that day, the pirate Islamic group Abu Sayyaf raided the resort and they kidnapped at gunpoint about 20 people who were then held for ransom. This group says it's finding to carve a Muslim state out of the southern region of the Philippines. There was a third American that was captured in that group of 20. His name was Guilmero Sobero. He was captured and they ended up cutting that man's head off. The number of hostages waxed and waned as some were ransomed and some were released as new ones were taken, and as other hostages were beheaded. For 377 days, this missionary couple were captives of these unreasonable and wicked men. But then on June 7, 2002, hundreds of elite troops equipped with night vision goggles and backed by the United States surveillance technology, they launched an attack to rescue and to free those missionaries. Martin Burnham was shot and killed by the terrorist, and Gracia was wounded in the leg. She was a grieving widow, but she was alive. And she was able to return to her children who were staying with their family. Gracia said this, I used to have this concept of what God is like and how life is supposed to be because of that. But in the jungle, I learned I don't know as much about God as I thought I did. I don't have him in a theological box anymore. What I do know 
is that God is God and I am not. Have you learned that? Amen. The world's in a mess because of sin, and she was right. But it's in a mess because of sin and not because of God. Some awful things may happen to me, but God does what is right. And He makes good out of bad situations. How many of you have found that's true? Would you raise your hand and say amen? Many of us can attest to that. Well, it was Paul's desire that he and his team be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, as it says in verse 2. In fact, that word delivered is from a word which means to deliver or to rescue. He was praying that God would rescue these people. In fact, it's, it's, called, it's in the error, it's tense in the Greek text, which means a once and for all deliverance. Paul's prayer, he was praying that the persecution would cease, not only in his own life, but in the lives of the people at this church of Thessalonica. Now, if you've ever gone through persecution, you can understand what praying for deliverance from persecution is all about. Praying from being hassled and harassed by unsaved people. Man, I went through that for two years, in the last two years of high school. And I was praying, God, Lord, I'm tired of this. Lord, can't you stop this? And he did. You know, the persecution that Paul had faced, it was intense. It was harsh, abusive. It was violent what those people went through. The enemies that persecuted Paul were, were unreasonable. Uh, in fact, that word means to be irrational, injurious, wicked. They were perverse. They were harmful people. These folks were capable of harming and injuring other people. I mean, they were just a bunch of bullies. Have you ever had to deal with bullies before? Huh? I've had to deal with them, and I found the best way to deal with them, you confront them face to face. That's what you do. Well, the Bible says, he says he called them unreasonable, and then he calls them wicked also. That word that's used is the word porneros. And it means this, that word wicked means full of annoyances, full of hardship, uh, actively harmful, causing pain and trouble. You ever had people like that in your life? I have. These folks are so vile that they are not content in their own sin. They desire to influence and corrupt other people and draw other people into their own destruction. That's what he's describing here. These kinds of people, they, they afflicted Paul, they afflicted many of the Christians in the Roman Empire. In fact, the city of Thessalonica was filled with people which caused Paul to have to get out of town after only three weeks of ministry. He had to leave. He was forced to leave. They acted this way because they had no faith in Jesus Christ. That was the problem. By the way, those people that you know that are mean as the devil, understand they're that way because they don't know the Lord. They don't know Jesus. Well, Paul uh, sought prayer to be delivered from them. I'll tell you what, a good prayer for you and I to pray is this prayer. Uh, Lord, deliver us from unreasonable, wicked men and women. I think we're going to have to start praying for that in this nation. There's a lot of stuff coming the tube, and it's coming right at us, we who are Christians. Well, we see another pedal here. Now look at verse number 3, 2 Thessalonians 3.3. 3. We see the pedal of reliance of the Lord. He says, but the Lord is faithful. Now he's described the problem, but then he says this, but the Lord is faithful, who shall establish you and keep you from evil. Now there are three wonderful things about the Lord that we're going to look at here. But let me ask you this here. Do you know people in your life that are dependable? People who are reliable, responsible, trustworthy? How many of you know some people like that? Would you raise your hand? Isn't it great to know people like that? Well, you know what? 
Paul says right here, he talks about the reliability of the Lord. He says, the Lord is faithful. <laughs> that word faithful means to be dependable, trustworthy, unwavering, and can be relied upon each day. Aren't you thankful that we can rely upon the Lord in our life? The faithfulness of God is like a beautiful bouquet of roses. His faithfulness never ends. In fact, it was Thomas Chisholm who penned these popular words. He wrote, Great is thy faithfulness, O God my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not. Thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever wilt be. Now, many of you folks have been around the block, and many of you can say to the Lord Jesus Christ, Great is thy faithfulness. You know, failing health may leave me weakened like an old frayed rope that's ready to break, yet great is thy faithfulness. Fear may melt and crack my courage and confidence in God's promises like frozen ice that is doused with hot water. Yet great is thy faithfulness. Fierce words may slander and slash me like sharpened swords or like stings of a scorpion. Yet great is thy faithfulness. The folly of wicked men may hinder my desire and service for Jesus Christ like fallen bolter, boulders on a mountain pass, yet great is thy faithfulness. Fickle friends may fr prove to be false and fake like counterfeit money, and they may dump you like an old tattered shirt in a dumpster, yet great is thy faithfulness. My fi finances may flounder, leaving my cabinets clear, and my billfold barren like a drought-stricken desert, yet great is thy faithfulness. His faithfulness was there with Moses and Israel, when the blue waters of the Red Sea like, uh, opened like a zipper, allowing them to cross on dry ground. His faithfulness was there when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were fettered and flung into a fiery furnace, only to be freed by the force of God himself. His faithfulness was there when Daniel was ushered into a den of death, littered by skulls and bones that were scraped clean by ivory teeth of bad-tempered lions. His faithfulness was there when the early church was pounded by the hammer of persecution on the anvil of adversity. Their sparks, however, ignited revival fires and turned towns upside down because God was faithful. His faithfulness was there during the years of Reformation when godly men and women courageously Proclaim God's truth in the face of rat-infested prisons or burning stakes. His faithfulness is here in our day through though attempts to smother His name from the psyche of our nation are being attempted by those who rule over us and make our laws God, however, cannot be fired 
God cannot be laid off. Lord cannot be erased from existence. A Lord can't be voted out of office. He cannot be banished or caused to vanish. We're stuck with Him. He is here to stay. His faithfulness is unto all generations. I'm thankful for about that because I know the Lord's going to be around for my grandkids, for my kids, and, and if the Lord tarries, for my, my great-grandkids, and so on. His generation is unto all faith, all generations. <clears throat> you know, God is faithful. Believers enjoy the faithfulness of God in many important areas that affect our Christian lives. For example, we see the faithfulness of His promise of salvation to us. What a blessing! Titus 1, 2, in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. If you're, just, if you're here this morning, if you don't know you're going to heaven when you die, God's made a promise to you. He'll save your soul if you put your trust and faith in Him. Seek His forgiveness and cleansing. He will forgive you. He will save you. In fact, He'll prepare a home in heaven for you. He'll do that. That's His promise. Uh, we see the faithfulness of His preparation. John 14, verse 2. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Thank God for His promise of preparation. We find the faithfulness of His peering also. Psalm 34, 15. The eyes of the Lord. Are, are, are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. Psalm 34, 17. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of all their troubles. If you've, if you've cried out to the Lord, he heard your cry. If you've been crying to the Lord this week, he's heard that cry. We find the faithfulness also of God's provision for you and for me. That's a promise? Yeah. Philippians 4.19. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Man, what a promise. Lamentations 3.22. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. Does that go for a teenager? Yep, it goes for you. Does that go for kids in kindergarten? Yep, it goes for them too. Does that go for people that are 105 or 110 like Dixie and Bray? Huh? Does it go for them too? Yeah, it goes for them too. Praise the God. His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, said Jeremiah. We find the faithfulness of his power. For us, John 1, 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. God's given you power to live the Christian life. If you want to live it, you've got the power to do it. We find the faithfulness of his purpose for us. God's got a purpose for you. He does? Yes, he does. Well, what is it? You're to find out. That's your responsibility. 1 Corinthians 6.20 For you are bought with a price. You are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God's. You are property of the Lord Jesus Christ if you're a Christian here this morning. 1 Peter 4.16 Yet if any man suffers a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. We find the faithfulness of the privilege of prayer also. You don't have to go through a bunch of red tape to be able to talk to God. He's readily available. Psalm 143.1 Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my supplications. In thy faithfulness answer me. And in thy righteousness. Isaiah got in on this and he said in Isaiah 65.24 and it shall come to pass that before they call. In other words, before they start praying, before they call, I will answer. 
And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. That's a promise for me and for you. We find also the faithfulness of His presence. Psalm 23, 4. Oh, what a blessing. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Now, many of you have gone through the valley of the shadow of death. You've had death of loved ones in your family. And guess what? The Lord was with you in that valley. He was with you. And not only that, it's the Lord that comforts us in those times. Hebrews 13, 5 says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. You may grow, have grown up and you may have had friends that have forsaken you. They left you. They forsook you. You may have had a spouse leave you. But the Lord says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. We find also, especially in this day of turmoil and chaos and confusion, we find the faithfulness of his peace for us. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Here's what Jesus said. Come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You know, the world's looking for rest today. You realize the billions of dollars that are spent on sleeping pills in this country? People can't rest. But God says, I'll give you rest. Psalm 29, 11, The Lord will give strength unto His people. The Lord will bless His people with peace. I tell you what, it's a blessing to enjoy peace in your life. And that peace comes from knowing Jesus Christ as your Savior and having a right relationship with Him. We find the faithfulness, not only that, of His protection and His care for us. Does God care about young people? Yeah. Does He care about mom and dads and grandmas and grandpas? Yeah, He cares about those folks too. God cares about those little babies inside the mother's womb too. He cares about them. 1 Peter 5, 7, Peter, Peter said this, Casting all your care upon Him, for He careth for you. 1 Peter 5, 7. God cares about you. He cares about what's going on in your life. Oh, come on, preacher. Yeah. Well, I just don't think so. Well, I don't care what you think. It's true. He cares about you. You may not think He does, but He does care about you. Psalm 55, 22 says, Cast thy burden upon the Lord. That which is weighing you down, making you miserable, God's here. Give it to me. Throw it on me. Cast your burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. No harm is going to come to you unless God allows it in your life for some reason or for some purpose. You may not understand the reason for pain and suffering that you might go through. But God knows what he's doing. And that's what this Gracia, this missionary's wife, concluded. God has a way of taking something bad and bringing something good out of it. God is very concerned about you. What trial you may experience is to help you grow in your faith, and to bring glory to God for what He accomplishes through you and in you in that trial. God takes that trial to work in your life and bring honor to Himself. Years ago, on a very bitter January night, the inhabitants of the old town of Sleswick were thrown into the greatest time of distress and absolute terror. A hostile army was marching down upon their little town. And there were news, there was news and there were fearful reports of the conduct of these lawless soldiers that were heading their way. Hourly, they were getting these reports of these soldiers that were coming toward them. In one large, spacious cottage dwelt an aged grandmother with her widowed daughter and her grandson. Those were the only three in the cottage. 
while all hearts quaked with fear, this aged grandmother passed her time crying out to God. Face it, there was nothing else she really could do. She cried out to the Lord. And she was asking God to build a wall of defense around them, quoting the words of an ancient hymn. Her grandson, grandson asked, Grandma, why are you praying for a thing that's so entirely impossible? Why are you praying that God will build a wall around us, around our house? Why are you doing that? That's not going to happen, Grandma. Well, she explained that her meaning only was that God would protect them. That's what she was praying for. Well, at midnight, the dreaded rumble of soldiers was heard. You know how they march together. You can hear them coming into the town. An enemy came pouring into that town at every avenue, filling the houses to overflowing. They just busted in the, the houses of the people in that town. While most fearful sounds were heard on every side of them, they could hear women screaming. They could hear children screaming. Screams were heard all throughout the night. But not one knock came at their door, which greatly surprised them. But then the sun came up in the morning and they understood why they were not bothered by that, by that army. Just beyond the house, the snow drifted and reared such a massive wall around the house that you couldn't see the house, yet alone even get over the drift. There, said the godly grandma triumphantly. She said, do you not see, my son, that God would raise up a wall around us? Thank God for his faithfulness in caring for us. If you know Jesus Christ as your Savior, great is His faithfulness. You and I have someone we can depend upon and rely upon. He's faithful. He's faithful to get you through difficult times that you go through in your life. He's faithful to help you on your tests when you're taking those difficult tests in school. He'll re help you to recall what you have studied so hard to learn. He'll help you, help you to get through difficult times in your life where people are pestering you and giving you a difficult time. He has a way of dealing with those kind of people. God is faithful. He's faithful to supply your need. He's faithful to heal you when you're sick. God is faithful. And most of all, He is faithful to save your soul and keep His promise to you and me. If you ask Jesus Christ to be your Savior, He will save you. He will never break that promise. But He's faithful to keep His word when He says, Those who don't know me will be cast into a lake of fire and brimstone. He will keep His promise. He's not like a parent that says, You do that again, I'm going to spank you. Junior does it again. You do that again, I'm going to spank you. Junior does it again. You do that again, I'm going to spank you. He's not like, like, not like a parent that keeps threatening to spank but never spanks. God says, no, if you die without knowing me, you will spend eternity in hell, and that is where you will go. So if you do not know the Lord is your Savior today, I hope that today you would invite Christ into your heart. And if you're a Christian, I hope that you will live your life for him. I hope that you will depend on him and trust him for the needs that you have in your life. Let's pray.